been 20 nights and 20 days Lost without a friendly face No reflection from my soul Emptiness is rising tall Calling to my brighter side Wishing for a place to hide A place to leave the dark in me Welcome to the vlog folks, yes I got rid of a little bit of the bush, so uh, yeah we were up last night, we're <laughs> really excited to see that the first of the chicks had begun hatching and I got up this morning and uh, we had a black leghorn out of its shell and then throughout the morning a white leghorn also managed to hatch and then uh, I got itchy feet so I decided to come into work for a little bit because the um, the rules and regulation, the guidance for food businesses uh, changed on the 25th, 24th, 25th of March, uh, allowing off licenses and licensed premises with off licenses, including brewery shops, to open as an essential uh, retail outlet. I don't make the rules, I don't necessarily think that it is essential. But what it does mean is that we can get rid of some of this stock that we've put into cask and keg over the past few weeks and sell it as uh, an off license. We do hold an off license at the brew shed as well as an on license. So we've been in touch with our local district council which is Bassett Law and we've spoken to a woman on licensing called Jenny and uh, we've pointed out this change in the, um, in the guidance and hopefully uh, they'll get back to us with their stand on it. So we're looking to maybe, maybe uh, get rid of some of this stock by Saturday. We're only gonna open for an hour with a one in, one out, cordoned off type of environment. Hopefully we'll be able to do a cash tin to drop your money in. <laughs> kind of rhymes, doesn't it? Or we can do uh, contactless payments, which would be perfect if it's kind of under 30 quid as it needs to be. So yeah, really excited um, that we've got chicks on the way. That's a great thing, the kids love it. I don't know how many more are gonna be hatched when I get home, but we may have five out of the eight remaining eggs, I'm not sure. Any more than that will be a bonus. Any less will be a bit of a disappointment. Anyway, let's have a look a little bit more at this change in the legislation that's come from the government over the past couple of days to allow us to, uh, to at least move a little bit of this stock instead of having to throw it all down the drain, which would be really kind of soul destroying. So apologies for the shaky hands. I'm not doing the screen recording section here like I did the other day. So guidance for food businesses just here, as you can see, it changed on the 25th of March. And if you look down here, we're on today the 26th so let's have a look up here so there we go businesses and premises that must remain closed so yeah here we are restaurants public houses wine bars all that kind of stuff that's us we're closed no doubt about it then retail all retail outlets with notable 
exceptions. Okay, supermarkets, granted, pharmacies, chemists, petrol stations, bicycle shops, kind of has me wondering why. Hard, maybe people have to go to work on a bike. Hardware shops, yeah, I can see that. People want to decorate while they're stuck in their house. Corner shops, news agents, vets, and then here's the kicker off licenses and licensed shops selling alcohol, including those within breweries. Bingo. So, as I say, we went on to our Bassett Law licensing page, uh, licensing enforcement at Bassett Law District Council, and we are awaiting further guidance. Fingers crossed we'll be able to move some of that stock that I've just shown you. So to support those who work for themselves, today I'm announcing a new self-employed income support scheme. The government will pay self-employed people who have been adversely affected by the coronavirus a taxable grant worth 80% of their average monthly profits over the last three years, up to £2,500 a month. Okay. This scheme will be open to people across the UK for at least three months and I will extend it for longer if necessary. You will be able to claim these grants and continue to do business. And we're covering the same amount of income for a self-employed person as we are for furloughed employees yeah. who also receive a grant worth 80%. That's unlike almost... Well, 80%, it's the same deal basically that uh, employees have been given. So when we determine whether we are going to be paid on our uh, self-assessment or on our payroll contributions is yet to be determined but it's something. But payroll's due for our staff tomorrow. They want paying, they've still got bills to pay, they've still got rent to pay, and we've had nothing from the government yet. It's been seven days today from his last announcement and nothing's happened. It's not far enough, it's not fast enough. They need to pull the finger out because it's firmly up their arse at the minute. And then we've got a little gift for Froggy here. That's right, we're filling up with 20 litres of proof of concept straight out of the tank for him. Oh bless you. There's the recipe look if you pause it you might get to see that. So uh, yeah I'm going to go home now. We've had the announcement from the uh, Chancellor and hopefully you know the reason I'm still upset about the whole situation is because we do need to pay our staff tomorrow and we've got no money in the bank. We haven't been open for a week. We've, still, we've got to pay the rent tomorrow. We've got to pay the staff tomorrow. There isn't enough money in the account. If we do that, we would be in liquidation. We'd be insolvent. We need that support from the government. We need these loans to kick in. We need these grants to kick in. We need the 80% employment rescue package to kick in so it oh. needs to all right mate see you later so it needs to happen it needs to happen tonight because we've got people we need to pay tomorrow and uh, it's going to be very tight it's going to be to the wire and i know a lot of people are in exactly the same boat as me lots and lots of small businesses across the country you might even be one of them watching this now so the government needs to pull its finger out. This is why we will probably need, it'll be a need, a case of need, having to sell these mini kegs if we get chance tomorrow. So all of this stock here, it's only gonna bring around 1,500 to two grand in. It's a drop in the ocean, folks, to be in open continuously. But let's just hope and pray that uh, there's a silver lining to this, this cloud that's hanging over us. There's certainly a silver lining for Mr. Christopher Froggard because he's just got a keg of proof of concept. You know, I could actually take this home right now and drink it. Oh, just look at that. I think I've got some on keg anyway. Right, there we go. No more than that, mate. 
That's your lot. I'll purge it with CO2 for you. And, uh, well, I'll be leaving it in a secret pickup location that nobody knows about but you and I, sir. But you and I. Here we go. Bit of paracetic acid. Lid on. There we go. Lid on. Ah, lovely. So let's just head round the corner to the CO2. Here we are. Oh, pop the light on. Might as well do this on camera. Hold on a second, I just need two hands for this. Here we go. How do you like them apples, buddy? <laughs> Listen to the regulator. <laughs> right, so I'm going to put... Let me have a look. We'll pop 30 PSI in there for you, mate. I think that should keep it. Keep it nice and pressurised for the ride home in the back of your car. Lovely jabbly. Turn that off. Pop that off. And that, folks, is all she wrote. Right, I'm going to bugger off home now. We'll see you there. Let's have a look how many more chicks we've got. Oh, well, we've come home to our two hatched chicks and two stuck ones. This little fella's almost out, but he just can't seem to break free. He's cracked the top of his shell off. And then this fella over here, he's stuck as well. So we may have to intervene at some point. I'm gonna give him 10 minutes, and if he cracks out in 10 minutes, we'll leave him to it. Come on, buddy. Push. So I'm home. We've uh, had a look at the chicks. Got a little bit of footage there. Still just the two out. And uh, two had pipped. They seemed to have got stuck in the shell. And it looked like the shells had started to dry. Or the membrane inside them. What can happen is they do get caught inside. And kind of mummified. And they die. So I took the uh, opportunity to very carefully start picking away at the shell on the outside without breaking the membrane just to help the chicks out. So one of them emerged looking in, well, very, very exhausted, but looks like uh, it's going to survive. And then the other one, we just seem to have nicked a little capillary vein on the uh, membrane so I've popped that back in if you do help chicks out of the shell which is not advised at all but you know I've been breeding chickens for a number of years now uh, sometimes I've seen it before when they do get stuck you have to make that snap decision of, do you help them which could cause them to die immediately or do you leave them and it can be a long drawn out process I decided to go in for these two I think we're going to end up with just four should this last one survive. Fingers crossed, he's still moving about, has been for the past 10 minutes, but there's no further, kind of, he's not out of the shell any further. So hopefully uh, he's still absorbing some of the yolk sac and when that's complete, he'll pop out and be happy. We'll see, we'll check in anyway before uh, the end of the vlog. So hopefully I'll be able to show you four fluffy chicks buzzing around in the incubator as the credits roll as they say and I'm here having a proof of concept out of the home bar having been to work and put all that beer in mini kegs I do feel pretty good for actually going to work and doing a job I don't know I just don't like hanging around at home all day long I've got to be doing something so anyway here is a clip of, hopefully, because I don't know if it's going to happen yet, hopefully four fluffy chicks. See you tomorrow.
part of the race for life. Finally a part of the race for love